I was so proud of my wife when she added her name to the organ donor registry. It made me a little queasy thinking about parts of her roaming freely outside of her body, but still I applauded her altruism. After she filed the paperwork, I didn't give it further thought. I assumed she would outlive me and that I'd never have to contemplate the subject again. But life never works out how we expect. The year that followed the accident was extraordinarily difficult. I wouldn't wish the experience on my worst enemy. I barreled through all the stages of grief. I uh, felt extreme degrees of emotion that I didn't realize existed. I went through therapy. I did my best to reassemble a life built for two. I tried to recreate our little rituals, visit our favorite restaurants, watch our cherished movies, cry to our special songs. I'd spend hours sitting alone at our special spot on a grassy hill that provided a spectacular view of an entire valley. We used to watch the sunset here, hold hands like smitten lovers. Months went by. I persevered, I grieved, I healed. I dreaded the one year anniversary of her death. While I, I knew it was going to be difficult, the events of that night exceeded my expectations. That evening I took my in-laws out for dinner. We reminisced about the good times, we wept over the experiences that we would never have. We hugged, we said goodbye, and I drove home. I opened my front door to my pitch black apartment, I turned the overhead light on. In front of me, were six people, three men, two women, a young girl. They all sat on kitchen chairs, arranged in a straight line. They all stared at me, smiling. Hello, I said. What are you people doing here? With a single, unified voice, they said, Hello, Hello honey bear. bear. The two words sent chills down my spine. That was my wife's nickname for me. The last time I had heard it out loud was exactly one year before today. Look, I'm calling the police if you don't leave right now, I shouted, fumbling on my phone. What's, What's the matter? matter? The six all said together. Don't, don't recognize, recognize me? me? The synchronization of their voices was flawless. Even their mannerisms, the tilt of their heads, the raised eyebrows, the pouting lips, all perfectly lined up. I shuddered. I'd seen those unmistakable quirks on my wife's face countless times. Listen, whoever you are, this is not a good night for bullshit, okay? Get out! I understand, I understand that you might, might be uncomfortable, uncomfortable with my appearance. appearance. But, but this, this is who I am now. What are you saying? Who are you? It's, it's me, me, honey, honey bear. bear. Your, Your wife. wife. I collapsed heavy on my knees. I was already an emotionally fragile wreck. This was too much to bear. That's impossible, I shouted, slamming my fist onto the carpet. This is a disgusting prank. Get out. Do you remember when I signed up to be an organ donor? You weren't comfortable with the idea, but you still supported me. What are you talking about? Each of the people you see before you contains a part of me. One by one, they stood up uttering a single word and sat back down. Pancreas. Liver. Heart. Intestines. Lung. The little girl stood up last and said, Kidney. Wait. Wait, so you people all received my wife's organs? I, I am your wife, wife, they said. There's, There's no one else here. My brain couldn't process this much lunacy at once. The room started spinning, and I, I collapsed to the floor. This is impossible. It's, it's not, not impossible, impossible, they said. And, and I, I need, need your help. help. No. This isn't real. This is wrong. What can I possibly do? The doctors who removed my organs still have my brain, and they're, they're not, not respecting, respecting it. it. 
Every, Every day, day I can feel them prodding and poking, poking at it. It feels like an electrical shock, and I lose control. Together, you and I shall take, take it back. back. How? I must, I must be reassembled. reassembled. The little girl stood up and walked towards me. She handed me a piece of paper. I need, I need you to, to buy everything, everything on this list. list. I looked at the list. A single thick needle. A long spool of cotton twine. A set of heavy-duty brass chains. Ten rolls of duct tape. Gorilla glue. A large tarp. A canvas bag. Two flat-headed sledgehammers. What is all this for? I asked. They all stood up at once and I felt six hands on my shoulders. Honey, Honey you're, you're going, going to, to have, have to trust, trust me. me. I drove my truck to Home Depot and sped way over the limit to ensure I'd make it there before closing. I tried to concentrate on the road, but focus evaded me as my mind somersaulted over the implications of what I'd just witnessed. I missed my wife, dearly, and I would do anything to see her again. That being said, I was more than a little uneasy about my wife turning into three men, two women, and a little girl. Even though her speech was interpreted through a disturbing chorus of voices, it was still my wife. I had so many questions. How long had she been conscious for? How did she come back to life and control this flock of meat puppets? What, what was the purpose of this list? One question about the six people she controlled lingered uncomfortably at the back of my mind. Are they still alive? I arrived at Home Depot and sprinted inside. I grabbed one of the oversized shopping carts and went to work. I found everything on the list, put it all in the back of my truck, and raced home. I opened my front door and found the six of them sitting on the kitchen chairs. Fantastic! They all said at once. Honey, can, can you turn, turn on the backlight back for me? me? They all stood up in unison and walked single file outside. I turned on the light and I saw them standing in the backyard with the supplies I'd purchased. I was transfixed as I observed their gruesome labors. One of the men laid horizontal on the ground. He set his legs straight and placed his arms at his sides. The little girl then tied his legs and feet together with the chains, clasping it shut. One of the other men laid down parallel to the first. The little girl repeated the process. Then the third man sat on the ground in front of their heads and positioned his arms and legs so that he was spread eagle. He shuffled forward towards the other men and they reached up, gripping his legs. The little girl then proceeded to use the long needle and twine and sewed the men together. I winced as I watched the sharp needle piercing into the meat of the men's flesh. They didn't even flinch. I approached the grim spectacle. What are you doing? Isn't, Isn't it obvious? obvious? They all said at once. I'm, I'm attaching, attaching my legs to my torso. torso. The two women then approached the men's torso, and feet first, they placed themselves in line with the man's arms. The little girl then repeated the process. She chained their legs together and sewed them securely onto the torso man's arms. The women lifted their arms over their head. The little girl dabbed the glue to their wrists and held them together to form a single, grasping, ten-fingered hand. The little girl surrounded the entire Gestalt creation with a thick covering of duct tape. And finally, she took the canvas sack, slung it around the neck of the torso man, and hopped inside. She propped herself up top, giving the monstrosity a comically undersized head. I recoiled and went limp as I saw the abomination stand up. I was amazed by its flexibility. The man legs didn't appear to struggle with the weight, and the women arms moved with surprising facility. Six bodies became the ultimate composite wife. She looked like a gross, fleshy Voltron. Sweetie? All the mouths said at once. Would you, Would you mind, mind grabbing the sledgehammer and tarp and meeting me at the truck? truck? The monster lurched forward, walking around the house and disappearing from sight. I grabbed the sledgehammer and made for the truck. When I arrived, my wife was sitting upright on the truck's bed. She looked like a giant in an undersized lounge chair. Okay, okay kiddo. I need you to drive me to the university's research hospital. hospital. That's, That's where my brain is held. You want me to drive you? I stammered. Won't people see you? No, silly. That's why I asked you to grab a tarp. I pulled the tarp over top of them and tied it down. I put the two sledgehammers in the back seat and drove. It wasn't a long drive. By this point, it was well past 10 p.m. 
There were people milling about, but none reacted to the oversized, benign-looking truck. I parked in front of the hospital. There were some lights on, but no visible activity. We're here, I said, and drew back the tarp. Perfect. You're the best, sweetheart. Do you mind passing me the sledgehammers? I handed her the two massive bludgeons, and she grabbed each of them firmly with her ten-fingered hands. She lumbered over to the building's glass facade. She didn't fit, so she smashed her way in. Fifteen minutes later, she emerged from the shattered front entrance. She was covered in blood and bits of viscera. She no longer held the sledgehammers. Instead, she clutched a glass jar in one hand and a sheath of paper in the other. I got it. Let's get out of here. She climbed into the back of my truck and I stretched the tarp back over her. I heard sirens approaching as I sped away from the hospital. Ten minutes later, I felt confident that we weren't being followed. I heard a gentle tapping on the back window. Hey, sweetie, my wife said. Do you know what would mean a lot to me? If we went to a special place. I knew exactly what she meant. The grassy hill that overlooked the valley. It wasn't far. When we arrived, we had the place to ourselves. I stopped the truck, I tore back the tarp. I held my hand out to help my wife down. Thank you, sweetie, for everything. She plopped her brain out of the glass jar and placed it securely in the sack with the little girl. I saw that she was still holding the handful of papers. What is that? I asked. It's all the paperwork you need to set up an organ donation. I got it for you. For me? If it worked for me, maybe it'll work for you, she said. Each of her faces looked really hopeful. I wasn't sure if I liked where this was going. Don't I have to die first? I asked. We'll worry about that later. She towered over me and gave me a gigantic hug. She surrounded me with her human arms and I felt the warm, duct tape bodies of six people press up against me. Nothing else mattered. I had my wife back. We sat together for hours, holding hands. I sat in her massive lap. We watched the sunrise together. And we watched the sunrise together. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So all the best to all of you who are still working and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year, with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either canceled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and Google, and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on Patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>